the Ten Commandments and Moses and the Ants, Part 3 of 13, on Between Master and Disciples, given in English on April 15, 2021. Nghiên cứu vật ấp yêu lòng chạy tưởng Ta con người cũng tự tài yeah, Sometimes you have to wait a long time hmm? mm. And also you have to look at the angle Which one will look good Yeah, Like you want to take some branches of the tree You don't take the whole tree It won't look that good Even though outside it looks good But in the photo it doesn't look as good it's funny, you know? So you have to choose an angle and choose some part. You cannot take the whole tree, for example, like that. It takes a lot of time from me. I like it. It just takes time. And sometimes the mosquitoes, they don't know anything about Artist Day or International <laughs> Artist <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> they appreciate me, not my art talent. Yeah, and... <laughs> Two, you know, only two hands and just one, same day, go, 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 go. <laughs> and then once I, I shoot the mosquito away, you know, the, the flower was covered again. I really love to take photographs. Sometimes I forsake my food on, or sleep or rest or whatever. If I see something good, oh, that's it. I forget everything else. Yeah, I have to take the photos. Because sometimes if you don't take the photo that day or that moment, Maybe the wind came and it's blown away and the, the flower will be gone, okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or the rain comes and the flowers will be gone also. Or the scenery won't look the same. Mm? Right. Yes. Okay. Like that. Everything takes time and we have only so much time per day. Yeah? yeah. That's yeah, the that's thing. Right. That's the thing on this planet. It takes me many hours because you have to select the best one to photograph and then when I come back I still need to screen it again for the best of all the shots and then I have to select again which one for what BMD on uh, Supreme Master Television but I, I really enjoy it oh why do I talk so much what did you ask a tree of life yeah okay of course, the tree of life symbolizes life, and the uh, deity wants to remind us that we do not destroy life, because if we destroy other life, then we destroy our own life also. If we destroy trees, which give us oxygen and shade and and hold the soil together so that it will not be washed away, and so many things that the tree can do, and if we keep cutting them just to raise the animals and then we kill the animals as well, then our life will be at stake also. Yes, yes, yes. Most of the humans do not hear the trees, do not hear the, the deities around us who are always trying to tell us things, even animals. Like some of you are afraid of spiders, they came to tell you something. Mm. They won't harm you. They know you are good. They respect you. Wow, like yeah. the other day, one of the spiders came in somewhere and one of uh, the people who stay here say, are afraid of spiders. The spider wanted to tell her that you are very special. Oh. That was the message. They just say, we envy you. You are special. Something like that. Oh, just like the bee just stays still right in front of me not afraid of my big size and my super size, <laughs> super talent. <laughs> Stay there for many seconds until she delivers the whole message. I just have to stand there and listen because she stays right in front of me and the road is small, okay? In front of the door. Wow. And the door is closed behind me. And both sides have things, so I cannot go anywhere. I just have to stand there and listen to her. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that when they behave like that, that means they want to deliver some message. And I'm always so grateful, grateful. One day, the bee even came to my area in front of my door. Not one day, but two days. And in the night, in the dark night, to warn me of intrusion of someone that I knew, of course. And the bees, I don't think they fly at night. 
I don't think they fly anywhere at night, but they flew in and stay in front of my face for quite a long while. Kept telling me, turn off the light and go inside. Twice the bee did that. And gosh, I gave them only a little water in the basin outside in the garden so that maybe they can take some water for themselves. Because I saw them taking water from the sink area before. I saw the bees that warned me three times. One time in daytime, I told you. Yes, yes ma'am. And two other occasions at night. I can never love them enough. I love the animals more than anything, any animals. So endearing, you know, like the, the skunk last time I told you that he responded to what I told him and helped me to call my dogs even. Oh, wow. Yeah, I told you already. And then when I was worried about him, and said, are you okay? He even responded to me, not just inside, but outside. <laughs> <laughs> I know it. This is so endearing. You understand me? Yes. <laughs> And the squirrels, they keep warning me or comforting me many times and even brought me some mangoes. Oh, wow. It's too small, I cannot bring the whole mango. He brought me a piece of mango and dropped it in front of my door. Oh, my God. You see how lovely the animals are, even the wild animals. Yes, my yes. And not just mangoes, but other fruits also. I thought, how come the fruit fell in front of my door? I don't see that kind of fruit in my surroundings where I was in retreat. And I didn't see any mangoes at that time. I didn't have any mango fruit around uh, in my surroundings at all. And other kind of fruit, nothing. It wasn't in season. I don't know how the squirrel got the mangoes. Big piece like the three-finger piece of mango and other kinds of fruit. Yes, I was wondering where the fruit came from until I saw it, that the squirrel dropped it in front of my door. And the squirrel who kept flagging the banana peels in front of me, in outside of my window, I was thinking he's hungry. I said, oh my God, you're hungry, there are food and fruit outside under the tree for you every day. He said, no, I don't eat banana. <laughs> I just want your attention. <laughs> My God, truly like that. He was such a chubby, young squirrel. <laughs> so lovely, lovely and beautiful. His eyes so big, glaring at me in all attentiveness, in all, I don't know how to explain it, so expressively urgent and so much love in it. I can never thank them enough for protecting me and loving me thus beyond exception, beyond imagination. I have prayed day and night for the sake of the animals, dignity, comfort, peace and safety since years already. But I never thought the wild animals, they are also so kind and so loving like that, and so protective. My heart just doesn't know how to, to express all this gratitude and love for them, for the animals. Thank you. Thank you, all of you, my dearest friends, the animals. I pray for all of you every day. May heavens hear us. Bless all of us, liberate all of us, liberate, free all of us from this trap of the illusionary Maya drama. Thank you all who helped. I would do anything. Every day I ask, is there anything else I can do to make the world vegan come quick? Not just these industrial animals, but also wild animals. They are so good, so good, so good. My God, they are saintly beings. If everyone knows what I know, I keep telling everybody, should believe me, what's the reason I should tell lies for the animals? What reason should I tell lies? You understand me? Yes. yes. yes.
the wild animals and the spider and the bees and the birds and the squirrels and the skunk. What for I tell lie about them? They truly interact with me like that. And I'm sure they interact with many others who can understand their uh, language. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, Master. Yes, Master. And their benevolent intention of protecting humans, despise all dangers. I'm not sure if the bee would fly and freeze in front of anyone like that. I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Any of you have this phenomena? Yes, Master. You, you have it? Who? Me. Yeah, what did he do? What did the bird do, uh, the bee do? Exactly that. Froze like that in front of me. Uh huh. And didn't move for a long time. Uh huh. Not long, just some seconds. And <laughs> For me, it was a long time because it never happened to me like that. Okay, and what did she tell you? I don't know. <laughs> No idea. That's the problem. We are the problem. <laughs> We are truly the problem. We're deaf, dumb, and blind. Yeah, that's one scholar, a rabbi or some Jewish uh, scholar. We also gave him an award, yeah, Shining World Hero Award, and also he wrote a book called. Uh, we saw it on our TV. Say, in front of the blind, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. You remember, yeah? Okay. Yes. I, I think he should add more in front of the blind, deaf, dumb. <laughs> no, or maybe adding more title like in front of the blind, talking to the deaf. <laughs> you know, uh, expecting the response from the dumb. <laughs> you think like that? Yeah, yeah. That's how I feel every day. You know. Whenever I have time to sit down and think of humans, I think we are all deaf, blind, and dumb. We don't know anything, and we look down upon the animals who are so intelligent, so in inside, so connected with the divine. Even trees, yeah, yes, even trees have to ooze out whatever oil they have to teach humans to be better stewards of the planet, not to kill lives not to destroy uh, environment or other animals because that means we're killing ourselves he says remind humans not to destroy themselves that's why he drew the tree of life so perfect yes. Mm-hmm. Yes, master. Yes, master. more perfect and precise more than what we do even with the pen It's incredible. Yes. so perfect like like done by a computer hmm? So detailed, so perfect in every little stroke. So it means exactly that. Do not destroy life. We we cut trees, we kill animals. All these are destroying activities to ourselves. It's so harmful that they don't even see it. <sighs> I don't know what the future brings, but the way the humans are going, nothing good. We come out of that. <laughs>